All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we do have an updated look at the college football AP Top 25. Normally, this is released every Sunday at 2 Eastern, but because of the Sunday night and Monday night games, it has been delayed. This is my instant reaction to it. I have not seen it before, so I'll give an organic little thought here. You can see, not surprised at all, that there has been separation now between Ohio State and Georgia, or excuse me, I should say Georgia and Ohio State, with Georgia getting 57 first place votes. I remember in the preseason, it was a lot closer. Ohio State got around 15, maybe 20. Ohio State did beat Akron 52-6, to but that was kind of a sluggish, slow game. Not that it's a big indication of a problem. I think Ohio State's going to be fine. They've got three ridiculously easy games to start the season, but uh, maybe a little sluggish. And then on top of that, Clemson getting demolished by Georgia. That's a very nice win for Georgia, commanding win. Although Georgia kind of had a slow first half. You'll get that sometimes, especially early in the season with college football teams. Uh, but you did see that 34-3, to amazing defense. They've got Carson Beck, possibly the number one overall pick. Nate Frazier, the running back, looks like a star. So not surprising, Georgia now clearly uh, almost like looks like 70 points above Ohio State for the number one overall team in college football. They will get Tennessee Tech this week, so they'll easily move to 2-0. and Ohio State will also move to 2-0 and as they face Western Michigan. Unfortunately, this is not updated, but this is, this is the last week results. You can see Texas now. So Texas will be facing Michigan as the number three team. They're going on the road. They're sitting right now around seven point favorites. They did demolish Colorado State. They outperformed the spread. They won 52 to nothing. They were 34 and a half point favorites. Really good defensive performance. Quinn Ewers, Isaiah Bond, the transfer receiver from Alabama looks good. Texas, it does look, look like they've got a few really solid receivers outside of him. Um, and, and obviously Ewers back again. So it's going to be a huge week for Texas. I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I'm guessing Texas wins. They're catching Michigan at, at a really good time. Michigan does have a very talented defense. I mean, they've got like probably three first round picks just on defense. You could even argue four because there's another kid emerging uh, pass rusher. So so Michigan is going to keep that game close, I think, especially at home. But if you're Texas, you have to like the fact that Michigan's QB situation is a big problem and you got to maybe get a turnover. I think that's part of the reason why they're around seven point favorites and they probably will beat Michigan, but they did move up a spot. You do have Alabama moving up a spot as well to number four. They demolished Western Kentucky, easily beat the spread. They were 31 and a half point favorites. They doubled it up. They won 63 to nothing. Analytically, I believe they had the best week one performance out of any top 25 team. Jalen Milrow had like nine pass attempts for three touchdowns. Ryan Williams, the true freshman receiver, who's only 17 years old, had a, a, I think he had like two really long catches. Uh, but yeah, uh, very easy win against Western Kentucky. I will say Western Kentucky this year, I think is worse than they've been in years past. And so this win will look, a, it, it, you know, you're, you're beating a really bad team, but still, you know, when you're 31 point favorites, you win by 63. Th that is pretty impressive. Um, and Jalen Milrow returning QB dual threat was really good last year. He's only going to be better this year. Bama, they face South Florida at home. So that's the back-to-back -back home and home, uh, you know, games. They beat South Florida last year in a struggle. They're 31 point favorites again against South Florida uh, this year. And then next week they go on the road at Wisconsin. And that game looks very easy now for Alabama. Wisconsin did not look good in week one against Western Michigan. You do have Notre Dame at number five up two spots. So yeah, there's a narrative now Notre Dame. I was looking at their schedule because of how bad FSU looks. I think they probably have to go 11 and one to make the playoff. You could still argue if they go 10 and two. But there's a few things you have to understand about Notre Dame. Number one, that win at Texas A&M, I think is going to look a lot worse at the end of the year. Right now, we think it's this big victory. And while it is, the problem is that Texas A&M being in the SEC, they're already 0-1. They're probably minimum going to lose four games this year, possibly five. So at the end of the season, if you're Notre Dame and you're 10-2 and and you don't play in a conference championship, and, and you know, so you're not going to get that resume point. You're going to be sitting on the couch. Is that enough to make the playoff? Do they have to go 11 and 1 to ensure they make the playoff? I think they probably need to go 11 and 1. Maybe they get in at 10 and 2, but their schedule is not very hard, especially they need Texas A&M to win as well because if Texas A&M has a really good season, they finish 9 and 3, they make a good bowl game. That's a huge week 1 win on the road for your resume. So if you are a Notre Dame fan, root for Texas A&M. Right now obviously Notre Dame's in a really good spot. That was a big win on the road. They were 3-point underdogs. They won by 10. So that was very impressive. Ole Miss demolished Furman. I'm surprised they didn't drop 80 considering it was like 52 to nothing at halftime.
But, uh, you know, that's just what's going to happen against an FCS team like Furman. Nothing too crazy. Oregon drops four spots. This surprised me. I thought there was maybe a chance Oregon could drop maybe two spots. But the game against Idaho was really bad. You win by 10 points. Your favorites by 48. Idaho is, is not that great of an FCS team. Really strange game where Dylan Gabriel played well. I mean, he was he like 33 of 38 for like 380. Just really weird. Now, Oregon has a chance to get it back at least a little bit against Boise State. I don't know if Boise State's going to be ranked. I'll have to check, but they're like a fringe top 25 team. They've got them at home. And Oregon is still like 19 point favorites against Boise State even after this bad performance. I'm surprised they dropped four spots though. Penn State stays at number eight. Really impressive week one performance. They crush West Virginia. They were up 20 to six at half. I do think they got a little bit of help with that delay. I mean, there's going to be, that's going to completely take the wind out of your sails if you're a fan and it's week one and you get a four hour weather delay at halftime. So it's kind of like a free second half for Penn State. You didn't have to deal with much in terms of an environment, but I mean, they were already up 20 to six. They played really well. Uh, Drew Aller looked really good. Former five star. I mean, they had him as a t- some, some sites had him as a top five overall player compared to, him to Josh Allen with that big body. Uh, so we will see what ends up happening with Penn State, but they do get Ohio State at home, and a lot of people think they're going to make the playoff. Missouri up two spots. I think that's just a function off of other teams losing. I mean, Missouri has a relatively easy schedule in the SEC. They destroyed uh, Murray State. They covered barely. I think they were 50 and a half point favorites. They won by 51, and so they're up to number nine. Michigan down a spot, so that's interesting. I will say that game against Fresno State was a lot closer than the final score indicated. Fresno State had first and goal, and what were they down? 23 to 10. They could have made it 23 17, but Will Johnson gets the pick six. By the way, Will Johnson did not have a very good game. I know he got a pick six, but he was getting beat routinely. And Michigan only outgained Fresno State by like 22 yards or something. So, I mean, we'll see with Michigan. Obviously, we're going to know. I mean, it, it depends. If they lose to Texas by like three points or six points, I think they'll probably stay like at number 12 or number 13 because it's like Texas is a top five team. Do you really punish them that much? but they do have big problems on offense. They've got a very talented defense. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you do have Utah moving up one spot. They crush Southern Utah. No surprise there. Miami moves up. So we knew Miami was going to move up possibly to 13, maybe 12. We didn't know exactly where. So they're up to number 12. They've got two really easy, really like three really easy games upcoming, unless you want to say going on the road to South Florida. Although South Florida has gotten some hype, honestly, for a group of five team, but they've got Florida A&M, the FCS team. And then I think they face Ball State. Uh, at both at home. So they're going to be three and none. Then they go on the road at South Florida at Raymond James Stadium. But that's a huge win on the road. Cam Ward is getting Heisman hype. Miami spent a lot of money on this roster with NIL, some five-star defensive players, some transfers, you know, Cam Ward, obviously. But they look really good and everyone has them the favorite to be a top four overall seed because everyone thinks they're going to win the ACC right now based on what happened to Clemson and FSU in week one. And I guess for FSU in week zero, um, you do have USC up 10 spots. So this is another team everyone knew was going to move up. You know, I think USC is a lot of talent. They've got a lot of talent. They've got an improved defense. That game against LSU, LSU very easily could have won it. And it's one of those things to where it's like, okay, two plays happen differently. LSU wins it. USC is probably unranked. Are they getting any hype? I mean, the problem for USC is they've got a much tougher schedule now. Being in the Big Ten, they've got a huge week three game or it's either week three or week four. I, I don't know what these teams with their buys because everyone has two buys now, but I think it's week three on the road at Michigan and that's a 3:30 game on CBS. So that'll be a huge one for them. They get Utah state at home this week. They'll beat them, but it's a big win. And USC, I mean, that, that is very important. If you want to try and make the playoff, maybe even with three losses, try and at least be in the hunt towards the end of the season, you need to win that game. 1000%. If they started 0-1, they would have zero chance because we know they're going to lose games. They're going to face tough teams. I believe they also face Penn State on the road. So it's not, or they make it, I think they get Penn State at home, but it's not going to be easy. Tennessee up one spot. So Tennessee, I have in the playoff. In the preseason, I predicted they'd make the playoff. They obviously just annihilated Chattanooga. They were only 38 and a half point favorites. They end up winning by 66. They've always got an amazing offense and they've got another huge chance against NC State. NC State really struggled against Western Carolina, the FCS team. That was a Thursday night game. I think Tennessee is going to beat Uh, NC State in a neutral site game, probably by like 14 to 17 Uh, there. You do have Oklahoma at number 15. They're up a spot. Oklahoma is getting some hype. We'll see. They did cover against Temple. Jackson Arnold, the young quarterback. Oklahoma State, 
pretty impressive win against South Dakota State. I mean, they closed that game 13-point favorites. South Dakota State, like the number one team in FCS. Maybe not this year, but they're still a top team in FCS. And, I mean, they throttled them by 24. So Oklahoma State, that's a very solid win for them. And if South Dakota State, I mean, they could win out based on their schedule being in the FCS. So that would be an even better situation. They get Arkansas at home. And Arkansas is one of those teams that they blew out Arkansas Pine Bluff. They won 70 to nothing. So everyone's like, oh, now they're good. But Arkansas Pine Bluff doesn't have a pulse. So it's like, I think Oklahoma State will probably beat Arkansas. But Arkansas is getting some hype. Oklahoma State gets them at home. You do have Kansas State at number 17. Kansas State, kind of a tough game this week on the road at Tulane. They uh, did beat UT Martin 41 to 6. We'll see with them. Uh, LSU moves down five spots. So LSU still inside the top 20. They can still very easily make the playoff. This is just how it is with college football now. You can lose early. You could lose two games early and still make the playoff. I did like LSU. You know, their offense, they've still got good skill position players. I would not overreact. I'm sure they're going to annihilate Nichols. But uh, that's just one loss. Brian Kelly always seems to lose games early in the season. They could easily come back, I think, and finish at least 9-3 and three and possibly maybe be on the outskirts of the playoff talk. I don't think their season's over. If they go 10-2, and two, they'll definitely make the playoff. But it is very tough now. That's a game you've got to win against USC considering you're in the SEC and you face a lot of elite teams. It's going to be very hard. You do have Kansas up three spots. <laughs> so Kansas was my pick to win the Big 12. And so they're up three spots now, just beating Lindenwood. 48 to three. They've got kind of a tough game on the road at Illinois. A lot of money coming in on Illinois. I think the Illini are only five and a half point underdogs now. That's a home and home. Last year, Kansas annihilated Illinois at home. Uh, you know, it was an on-campus game there. They they won like 42 to six or something. But I think Kansas is going to win. I love their offense. Arizona at number 20. Kind of you know 39 points to New Mexico. That's not good defense for Arizona. Arizona's got a fun offense for sure with McMillan and Noah Fafita. But a 39 points is not going to get a ton. You do have Iowa up four spots. Iowa was up six to nothing at halftime. It seemed like the same old Iowa, but they end up winning 40 to nothing. So a 40 burger for Iowa and Cade McNamara, you know, the new OC, we'll see with them. And also they do have I- Iowa State uh, this, I think at home. Yeah, they're only two and a half point favorites. So we'll see what happens with Iowa. I think they're more of the same, honestly, even though they scored 40 points, six points in the first half against Illinois State. Come on. Uh, how about uh, Louisville entering the ranks? Uh, they won 62 to nothing. And Louisville is a team now in the ACC with what happened to Clemson, with what's happening to FSU. They had a good year last year. Could they potentially be a team that makes a run in the ACC? We'll have to see. But Louisville now has entered. How about Georgia Tech? <laughs> it's funny with Georgia Tech. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. So everyone goes crazy. FSU is ranked number 10 entering week zero. Georgia Tech wins that game in Ireland. And now we get, we understand that Georgia Tech is a fraud because because they only won by three on a walk-off field goal. Boston College beat FSU by like 14 points on the road. I'm only, I'm kind of kidding, but it is still funny. I mean, they beat Georgia State 35 to 12. They barely covered that spread, but it is funny that, you know, everyone's like, man, Georgia Tech got this huge win. And then Boston College goes on the road and beats them by a a much bigger margin. So how about uh, NC State? Wow, they stayed at 24? That surprises me. That was not a good performance against Western Carolina. They were only up by 10 points late in that game. And then Clemson hangs on by a thread. They're still ranked at number 25. I guess Georgia should be happy that Clemson is still ranked. But it doesn't matter. I mean, we'll have to see what happens with Clemson. They face Appalachian State if they win that game. You know, they'll probably move up move up a few spots. I guess it depends how close it is. They're like 16 and a half point favorites. So AM moved all the way outside of the top 25. That doesn't surprise me, considering they were ranked 20th, I think. Boston College getting a bunch of votes uh, for, for beating FSU. Boise State is not ranked. We'll have to see how they do against Oregon. Iowa State, they've got that game against Iowa. Memphis, they're my pick to make the playoff out of group of five. They looked good in week one against a really bad FCS team. Nebraska beat uh, UTEP very easily. Dylan Raiola, his debut. SMU, they kind of had a bad week zero performance. They looked better this past week, but they faced a nobody. Washington, I'm not a big fan of Washington. Liberty, they struggled early against Campbell. You've got Vanderbilt. Who was voting for Wisconsin after that performance? They nearly lost to Western Michigan. Auburn, yeah, there's some Auburn hype because they uh, they trounced Alabama A&M like 73-3. to Tulane gets a few votes. North Carolina, after beating Minnesota, barely. 
UTSA, App State. I like Kentucky. Kentucky is a team that I think should probably be over most of these teams in terms of receiving votes. I think Kentucky is going to be good. You've got Brock Vandergriff, the four, former five-star. He kind of busted at Georgia, but he looked good against Southern Miss. They've also got a decent defense. I like Kentucky. Uh, West Virginia. I mean, who's voting for West Virginia after that? <laughs> Come on, 34 to 12. That was a, an, a blowout and, and a bad performance at home. Arkansas, UNLV, and then Colorado. Uh, I mean, Colorado did beat uh, North Dakota State. That's a quality win, but uh, either way, that's going to be a big game. Nebraska against Colorado. The winner probably gets ranked. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.